Hey everyone, it's Stu here from 3B. When NVIDIA announced the 2080 Ti and the 2080 RTX GPUs last year, there was a big uproar about the price. Understandably, $1,400 and $1,500 for a GPU is pretty much ridiculous. So when they announced that there would be a sub $1,000 GPU, my interest was piqued, not only because What's the extra four or five hundred dollars worth when they can do one for a thousand dollars? And is it worth that thousand dollars or are we getting much less? Is the 2080 Ti sub one thousand dollar version going to be like a 2080 Ti Lite, for instance? So in this review, I'm going to be looking at the EVGA 2080 Ti uh, Black Edition, which cost me eleven hundred pounds. I've still not seen one. Uh, in the US or in the UK, that's $999, $999 or pounds, um, but we'll wait and see. So the question we have to ask ourselves is this so-called bargain, and of course it's not a bargain at $1,000, pounds, dollars, $1,100, pounds, $1,100. Is it worth the $1,100 pounds we're spending, or are we getting so much, much less, and is it worth paying three, four, five hundred dollars more to get the true 2080 Ti? Or, this is the big question, can we overclock the 2080 Ti Black Edition, or basically the sub thousand dollar ones they were claiming with eleven hundred dollars, keep going back and forth on that, can we overclock it to make it the same as the full blown, the full price versions of the 2080 Ti? So I've been investigating, I've been testing, I've been banging away like a good un, and let's have a look at my results. So the question, the big, big question really is, are we getting an awful lot less for a 2080 Ti Black Edition or the 1100 pound dollar version as opposed to the fourteen fifteen hundred dollar versions are they worth that extra three four five hundred pounds dollars and the big question we have to look at is is that really you know is that price differential really worth those few extra frame rates and can we overclock the 2080 ti black edition the one that i got that was 1100 pounds and get it to a point where we're getting the same performance or similar performance than the fourteen, fifteen hundred dollar versions. So what I've been doing, I've been using uh, a benchmarking tool which is pretty popular called Superposition, um, which allows me to benchmark it uh, pretty well, um, and then I can compare it against the standard. This is this is basically what I've done. I've done it with the default settings out of the box, and then I benchmarked it with uh, superposition, and then I put the fans on full, and then benchmarked it again, and then from there I I tried with various overclocks, and then I settled understandably for Jay-Z two cents overclock that he used for his own 2080 Ti's. I tried to push it a little bit for, more, more, but it, it crashed a bit and I'll explain a bit more about that. And then I used that at the default fan settings and then uh, the same overclock again with the fans on full. So let's dig in and have a look. I'm looking at my screen here, but just so you know, I'm you will see the the the, the full um, results yourself in in a full screen as I talk. So the first one I have here that um, that we uh, are doing is is the basic standard settings out of the box, no overclock, fans on default, everything as is, just basically throwing in the card and letting it do its thing. The key thing really that you see with the with the eleven hundred thousand dollar versions are that the heat sink is a lot smaller, and what I believe they've done to reduce the thermal output of the GPU 
um, chip is um, sort of throttle down the voltage so you can't over throttle it. And then by throttling down that voltage, they've put the output at around about 1350 megahertz on the GPU on the core clock and around about 7000 megahertz on the um, memory clock, which sounds an enormous difference between, um, I think, the uh, the standard TIs go from 1540, 1550, all the way up to 1650. So there's quite a big sort of hit when you consider maybe 100 hertz equals maybe 5 to 10% frames per second. Um, but this is where the findings become interesting, is that the, that's the base core clock of the, the, the GPU on the 1100 pound versions is 1350. But as you can see from just out of the box, fans on normal, it got up to 1860 megahertz without any overclock. The key thing to note with that is that the GPU temperatures did get up to um, sort of max before it started to throttle a bit. You start to start to see some GPU throttling um, just coming in a little bit just to make sure those temperatures don't exceed 84 uh, degrees C, which is pretty toasty. That's a pretty toasty GPU right there. But still, it managed to perform really very well indeed. It uh, the core clock reached a maximum of 1860 megahertz um, and the overall score on um, superposition was number 200 in their results and it was a score of 10,980. So that's pretty, pretty decent, just straight out of the box, no fiddling, nothing, off we go. And it managed to, you know, do pretty well. It did get pretty toasty, though. Now, the next thing I did with the 2080 Ti Black Edition was I let everything cool down. I then put the GPU fans on maximum before I ran anything, before I put it through the, um, the testing, the, the uh, benchmarking. So I put the fans on full um, to cool the GPU right down um, and then I ran it at standard core clock which was again 1350, it's uh, memory at 700 megahertz as well. And there was quite a bit of a difference, it still um, sort of warmed up pretty quickly but it didn't get to the threshold of 84 degrees. Um, so it managed to, and it maintained that pretty consistently. It didn't get any higher than I think the maximum it got to was 79 degrees, which is pretty decent. The other thing is that it got to 1875 megahertz. That was its max core clock. So, you know, it's still pretty decent. It's still doing really well out of the box with that really very thin a heat sink that it has attached to it. Um, and the other thing is that it was relatively consistent. Once it reached around about 79 degrees, it stayed there. The difference between the um, having the fans on full all the time, obviously, is one of noise. You know, it's when you've got the fans running at 3,400 RPM, it's going to be a little noisy, but a lot of people play with headphones these days, so it's not too much of a problem. Um, whereas what I did notice when the fans were on just the default, where it was up to the, the, the GPU to decide what the fans should be going at, despite reaching 84 degrees, which is the maximum, um, the fans didn't reach full capacity. They didn't reach their full speed. They still, they went up to about 89%. Which I thought was really interesting, even though it was at its max core temperature or the max threshold that it was prepared to be at 84 degrees, it wasn't increasing the fans even any more than 89% to reduce that temperature further down. Yet when I had them at full, when it was manual and I was had the fans at full from the get-go, 
uh, we got a nice steady core temperature around about 79 degrees. So I don't know whether that's some sort of firmware, software issue running there, that the fans aren't getting up to full speed. I don't know, but it's an odd thing there that I did notice. But overall, just out of the box, fans on full, it did incredibly well. Remained relatively cool. You know, GPUs get crazy hot, and this has got a thin um, heat sink. And it got to 1875 megahertz on the core clock, and the, um, the, the temperature was 79 degrees centigrade. The score on superposition was 11158, which was put me at 191. Yay, thumbs up, out of the box, full fans on, way to go. Now this is where things start to get a little bit interesting. What I decided to do, I did try various overclocks of my own. Um, I did um, increase, I used um, the, um, uh, the EVGI X1 Precision tool, which is really good. It's a lot easier to overclock and you can increase the memory clock speed, um, the core clock speed in increments and increase the voltage and everything. Uh, what I decided, I, I did try and push it a little too much. I uh, added sort of 200 megahertz to the standard core clock and it, it started to crash, actually. Uh, I think maybe because it was getting too hot too quick and the, the fans couldn't call it fast enough. Um, so what I settled with is, thanks to Jay-Z Two Cents, great videos, great channel, um, his... Uh, overclock that he used for his 2080 Ti's is just fine for the 2080 Ti Black Edition, even with its relatively thin um, uh, uh, heatsink. So what we have is the memory clock at 7750, so plus 750 megahertz on the on the memory clock, sorry, and then on the core clock we um, just increased it by. Um, by 100 megahertz. Um, so rather than running at 1350, it's just hummed along. It started at 1440 and went up and then boosted from there. Uh, the By increasing the voltage, um, it increased the allowable temperature for the GPU. And I think this is pretty much its maximum. It is 88 degrees C, which is really very warm. Um, I didn't say warm, it's hot, isn't it? That's hot. Uh, and so that's what we run the run everything at. And this is the fans at default. So you will see this, of course. And it got up to temperature, it got up to 88 degrees within a minute. <laughs> so, so it's pretty warm. Um, but what it did do is we got up to 1935 um Uh, peak sort of core clock and then sort of steadied out at 1890. It did dip a little bit when it sort of reached um, that, that sort of 88 degrees. It did sort of throttle down a little bit, but not massively, not a huge amount, which was really interesting. So we got a lot of performance for, you know, basically you know, a simple overclock using the X1 uh, precision tool from EVGA. And one of the things I, I have noticed is, you know, we have the, the frames per second here from each of the scenes within superposition, and you can download a demo. It's, it's, you can download a demo to, to get that, and then you can pay for it to submit your results and, and get details of, of, of the actual sort of performance. The frame rates are pretty pretty decent you know i i noticed that you know we're getting average frame rates of around about um 100 plus in some places uh most of the time it's between 90 and 100 frames per second max frame rates are around about the max i think we got was 110 um frames per second and this is running at 4k with everything on, and superposition is an incredibly intensive benchmarking tool. If you haven't seen it, go go download it, it's free, try it out. It will really push your system. It will really push it. So we got 
a really good amount of performance boost for a very simple overclock and we've got around about 1935 uh, megahertz on the core claw, claw, claw clock and 7, 750 megahertz on the memory clock. It did get very warm though and these were the fans on default and again with that note on the fans on default even though it got this hot and it was throttling down a bit, it throttled down around about 50, 60 megahertz um, to keep that core temperature at 88 degrees C. The fans didn't get any more than 89%, which I th again, I think is pretty strange. The other thing to note is that th th it's just on the default. Um, it was a lot quieter than the final test that I did where I had the fans completely on full. And we'll go and look at that now. So the final test I did, so the same overclock with the fans on full. The key things to note is we got around about an extra 45 megahertz by having the fans on manual on full. And the temperature got to 86 degrees C, didn't reach 88 degrees C, which is the maximum. And there was very little throttling. It remained pretty consistent remaining at around about 18, 90 degrees C overall. So the question is then that obviously it's one of temperature, which is a, which would be a given concern when you get a, a, a very powerful GPU um, that's going to emit a ton of heat, um, especially when you see the ultra editions, the EVGA and the other OEMs do is where you see, you know, other manufacturers do where the heat sinks are about twice the thickness of the current one on the black edition. And that was always my concern. Would it be able to cool it enough? And obviously to reduce costs on the cost of the heat sink um, and to reduce thermal output, they've, they've throttled it down a bit. But um, as we've seen, we can still get a lot of performance out of this card, even with the standard heatsink, um, with a maximum frame rate, I think we got on superposition, again, at around about 100 to 10 with all fans on. The only difference is, is that we managed to reduce the temperature down to a steady sort of 86 rather than 88. It was a little bit louder, but again, if you're wearing headphones, you're not going to notice it. So the question is, is it massively different from the core clocks that we're seeing being output by the sort of standard full-blown 2080 Ti's, the ones with the big fat heat sinks? And really the only difference is, is that I've seen, um, I believe that uh, Jay-Z Two Cents got his up to 2100 or 2200 megahertz. So at the very most, it was 200 megahertz more, um, which would equate to around about, say, at the top end, say 15 frames per second extra. So the other thing you have to ask yourself, even if it was, say, an additional 15, 20 frames per second more, um, when you're getting 190 to 100 frames per second anyway on this edition, on the black edition, would that extra 20 frames, say, be worth to you four, five hundred dollars That's an awful lot more you're paying per frame out of you know just it's a ridiculous it makes no no sense at all to me to pay that difference for those extra 20 frames per second and the other thing that i wanted to do when i got this um i was always under the view that i would probably water cool it i'd get a gpu block of some sort and then water cool it and try and overclock it even more and what I've seen with people that have managed to do just that, which is what I want to do, is that they've managed to get it around about to 100, I believe, which again breaks that down even further. So if you have an existing water cooling system in your PC and all you need to do is buy a block 
and then connect it to your water cooling system, you're going to get an awful lot more and a lot cooler and obviously quieter PC for a saving of around about three, four hundred pounds perhaps. Or the other option is that EVGA, for instance, are doing a modification that you can add on, which is just a basic, simple GPU water cooling kit that you can buy for around about $170, I believe. So it's a pretty cheap way of water cooling your GPU. That's, you know, of course, if you're concerned about the sound, it's not massively intrusive. You know it's there because the fans are going crazy. Uh, but if you play with headphones, you're not going to. Uh, uh, it's not going to bother you. The, of course, the GPU is guaranteed. The the temperature settings are set by EVGA or the manufacturer themselves. You're not setting 88 degrees or 84 degrees. That's what they're setting. So they're setting it at a maximum that they believe is safe and. Uh, reliable for that GPU and it's not going to burn it out. So don't worry about those high temperatures too much. So it's more a case of are you going to be more comfortable with the fans being be there being no noise and in which case you could buy a water block or buy the EVGA kit or um, if you're not too bothered about the fan noise and you know those heat temp those temperatures are within limits that are set by EVGA anyway uh, and you play with headphones, then it's not too much to worry about. So in my eyes, in my sort of final review, not uh, thoughts on the EVGA RTX 2080 Ti Black Edition, is that it's an amazing card for, I would say, an amazing price. It's, it's still hugely expensive, but when you compare it to the others, it's a lot cheaper and you're saving basically almost a third of the price of uh, a full-blown 2080 Ti with the fat heatsink for the sake of maybe a debit of 20 frames per second. So that's what you have to think, you know, is that really worth it to you? So I hope that review has been helpful. Let me know your thoughts, any questions I'm happy to answer. Don't forget to give me a thumbs up and click the bell and subscribe if you've not already. Thanks again. And don't forget the streaming. We stream Mondays and Fridays, 3 till 5 p.m. GMT, and Wednesdays, 7 till 9 p.m. GMT. So join me there. Thanks again. Have a great time. Take care.